Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video here at Free Will Photos. Today, we're taking a look at DxO Photo Lab 8. Now, this software has been released for a little while now, and I have been testing it out, working with it, trying to figure out where it fits into my overall workflow. And I think I kind of have worked that out, and we'll kind of talk about that through the video. Now, if you would like to pick up a copy of Photo Lab 8 and you want to help support this channel, consider using my affiliate link down in the description box below. I make a small commission, but that's at no extra charge to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at Photo Lab 8. So here we are inside of DxO Photo Lab, and one of the headline things that have changed the new features is the denoising or the noise removal tool. Uh, it's now using a new algorithm. So. Here's an image that I photographed and you can see I shot this at 20K. Now, it is properly exposed. There may be some blown highlights, but for the most part, it's properly exposed. So let's see what we can do with this image and the new noise reduction algorithm inside of Photolab 8. To get there, we're gonna click this little icon up here. It looks like a circle with two little circles inside of it. And at the very top, you can see DxO denoising technologies, and there are four options. The one that we want to check today is the Deep Prime XD X2S. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And for some reason, it doesn't look like it did anything. But in order to view it, which this is also a new tool, we're going to click this little loop uh, tool up here in the toolbar. And you can see that as I move it around, I get a preview of what it looks like. Now I'm looking at this at 200%, but if you just look at the apple right here versus the apple inside of the loop, you can tell that it is no longer a very noisy location. Now let's take a look at some of these shadowed areas. So we'll come about here and you can tell that in the shadows, just looking to the left here, in the shadows, there's a lot of noise. And when you are zoomed in and this is rendering the actual noise reduction, you can tell that there's no noise in that area or very little noise, which I think is tolerable because this was shot at 20,000 ISO. All right. Many people would never think to push their cameras ISO to that point. The reason why I bring up the denoising technology is I've said it in many of my videos in the past, but the cameras are really getting good at capturing images at high ISOs. But then when you have a software like Photolab 8, where you can remove the noise without really causing any uh, degradation to the overall image. I think that you can almost worry about or stop worrying about shooting at high ISOs. Uh, gone are the days of trying to keep your ISO at 100 at all costs. I get it. We want to keep our ISOs as low as possible in some cases. But now if you have to push your ISO, you have software that's going to be able to keep up with your high ISO needs. So one of the other new features inside of Photolab 8 is the hue mask. And what this allows you to do is select a portion of your image based off of the color in the image. So to do that, you'll click on the local adjustments tab and then you'll click on the hue mask. When you select that, you'll get a eyedropper that you can kind of move around over your image and select a color in the image. Now I want to select these leaves right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click right there and you can see that it started to select this hue on this portion of the leaf. It's also selected some extra stuff in the image. And I'll show you how to clean that up here in a little bit. But what I can do to really expand where this is selecting because it didn't get all of the leaves in the middle there like I would want it to. I can just pull out on the tail here and it's going to expand. I can also pull these arrows over to the right and you can see it's adding more into the overall selection here. So if I pull this to the left, you can see that it's starting to capture more of the leaves. 
and I may not be able to get all of them with this particular selection. So what I have found when working with this tool, sometimes it's better to work with the inverse. So in order to do that, I'm just going to delete this one and then I'm going to uh, because I still have the hue mask selected, what I'm going to do is just select one of these plants in the middle. And you can see that really uh, selected a lot. So let me see if I can kind of dial this back a bit. Let me pull this back, see if I can just exclude those leaves. So let's delete that and try one of these darker colors. There we go. And there's a little bit of trial and error when it comes to using tools, but that's okay. And what I want to do is really just expand this a little bit. So it exposes more or selects more of the image and it doesn't have to be perfect. The goal here is just to make sure that I get a good enough selection that when I hit invert like so, I now have all of those leaves in the middle selected. So what I can do now is make my adjustments. So let's say I wanted to make the that section brighter and increase the highlights, the midtones, and I'm just making adjustments so it can be seen. I'm not making anything uh, artistic here. Okay, but it's going in places where I don't really want it to go. So that's where you can grab the eraser tool and with the eraser tool selected and I'm going to hit show mask. All I need to do is increase my the, the size of my brush. So I'm going to do that by pulling up on this little tool here and I'm going to actually decrease the feather, go with a hard edge and I'm just going to paint away all of the areas where this mask is applying that I don't want it applied. And when I get around the leaves there, I'll be a little bit more careful. Like so. And you know, this, like I said, it's a little bit of trial and error, but this is one of the ways to work with any masking solution, uh, regardless of the software. And then I'm just going to pull up on my feather, make it 100%, maybe make my brush just a touch smaller. And I'm going to come around and paint away the edges of this adjustment. Now, I'm not going to make it perfect for the sake of tutorial, um, but I think you can kind of catch on to how you can work with this particular tool. So let's go ahead and turn off the mask and I think it's actually over that leaf as well. So we'll just erase it from here. I think that's, let's see if it's actually erased. Yep, looks like it is. So we should be good to go now. All right, and then what I can do is just pull down the exposure, pull down the highlights, maybe pull the mid-tones the other direction and make a different adjustment now. And it's only impacting those leaves. So we can even boost the micro contrast to really make those leaves pop. And yeah, I could do a number of things, but you know, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time in this particular tutorial working on doing those things. I just wanted to kind of showcase how you can make selections for the entire surroundings. Now, if I wanted to, what I could also do now that I've cleaned up the mask, I can invert this and that's going to apply my selection on the outside. So everything is getting that uh, adjustment that I just made. And so now what I can do is maybe darken down these leaves. And this is probably going to be too much of an adjustment, but I can get really, really artistic in the way that I start to work with the differences of these leaves versus the leaves that I was trying to select initially. So we'll go ahead and close that and we'll say that that's okay for right now. 
All right, so the next tool that we're gonna cover is a very, very classic, and it's a staple in photo editing, and that is the Curves tool. Now, the new update to PhotoLab, it introduces the Luminance Tone Curve, which is extremely, extremely helpful when you don't want to modify the colors, but just the tonal range in your image. So let me show you how it works. Uh, right here, we're on the RGB tone curve. So if I pull this down and pull this up, making a basic S curve, and you know that's nothing new to what you've been able to do. Um, but you can see it's starting to change the colors in my image. If I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that it's not just developing the contrast in the image. It's really starting to change the overall saturation. So. Let's go ahead and remove these curves on this side of the uh, tone curve. And let's click on luminance. Now, what this is gonna do when I pull this down, you can see I'm not getting any change in saturation or, uh, or the color of the overall image. I'm only getting the luminance value. So uh, you can really see that when you pull up on the midtones, and you can see that it's just adding brightness or if I pull down on the midtones it's just darkening the metal grays let's go ahead and reset that and then if I were to come over here to the RGB and do the same you can see that it's adding in yellow to this leaf so we'll actually take a look at this leaf right here all right so with the RGB you can see that it's adding in some yellow and then with the luminance, if I increase this, you can see it's not adding in yellow uh, per se. It, it looks like it's adding in a little bit of yellow, but that's because it's increasing the values of what's already there. And that's going to accent the yellows that are inside of the green hue originally or initially. And so another update that's really helpful especially if you're like new to color grading or using the curves tool is inside of each of the channels you now have the color that corresponds with the direction you're pulling the curve so in the blue channel if i pull up i'm adding blue to the image and if i pull down then i'm adding yellow to the image now if I come over to the greens again, if I pull up, I'm adding green, but the opposite is going to be magenta. And I love the way that these tone curves feel uh, because when I pull this down, the mid tones here, and I add that magenta, it feels very natural. Like the amount that I pulled is the amount that's reflected on screen. So DxO did a great job with adjusting the way that these uh, curves really do play in your photo editing experience, the way that it feels, I do enjoy it. And then of course, with the reds, you can pull your reds up and you, or you can pull up to add red, I should say, and then pull down to add blue. Now, what's also new in here to the best of my knowledge, is this histogram that it just shows you where in the image your tonal ranges are sitting. Now, I'm not going to go into how to read a histogram, but if you want to add contrast to an image, I think one of the cool things that you can do now is come over to the luminance tab and grab your output slider and just pull that in to the edge of the histogram. And what that's doing is setting your white point, and then sometimes you may need to set your black point depending on how, how your image is exposed. And I can't quite grab, there we go, I did grab it. And so as I pull this over, you'll see that I'm adding more black into the image. And really what that's doing is setting the black point. And you know, Photo Lab has given us a great opportunity and experience in the way that we can establish our black and our white points to really build the dynamic range in our images. So here is what it looks like with the tone curve on and here's with it off. It's very subtle and that is the way that I really enjoy working with my images so I know how I'm building things up. Unfortunately, 
This is a global adjustment, so you have to use this, you know, as sparingly as you can when you are editing your images so you don't add too much contrast or information in the global uh, and then when you come over to the local adjustments then you can really start to add this in the future i do hope to see that photo lab adds the curve to the local adjustments tab because i think that there's a lot of value in being able to mask that in wherever you would like to see it all right, so the last feature that I'm going to cover about Photolab 8 is probably more of a um, a quality of life update, which if you caught my earlier video when I initially reviewed Photolab 7 and Filmpack 7, uh, I talked about how much I enjoy using the software to kind of grade my images and get that filmic look, which is primarily how I use Photolab. When I click on the camera body or any other uh, thing that would preview, if I just scroll through these and I'm using the arrow key on my keyboard to just go down, you can see that it is generating the preview on the image. This is huge. I love this because this allows me to just sit here and click through and really fine tune or work through which one I enjoy the most on an image. And I don't have to worry about clicking it and then saying, all right, I don't like that. And then going to the next one, I can just easily have this menu open and just cycle through and they render really, really fast. So I appreciate that. And, you know, maybe I like the way that the greens look with this Leica M preset or render. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the return key. And it has now applied the Leica M preset uh, for the camera body. Now, the camera body options only work on raw images, but the feature will work on any of the options where you can kind of scroll through a list and uh, look at it live on the preview. So really, really huge quality of life update. Now, if you've never owned Photolab 8, it's going to cost you $229. If you are upgrading from version 6 or 7, it's going to be a $99 upgrade fee. And then if you want to purchase Film Pack 7 along with Photolab 8, it's going to be about $300. Now, I quoted all of these prices in US dollars. Obviously, if you're watching this in a different country and you have a different currency, it's going to be the equivalency or whatever the cost of doing business in that country. That's how much it's going to cost. But when you go to the website, it will all work itself out for you. But here's what I encourage everyone to do. Using the link down below, Go ahead and download a free trial of Photolab 8 and test it out on your own images. See if it's going to work out for you. And if it does and you do want to purchase, then just know that I do make a small commission, but it's at no extra cost to you and it does help support this channel. So with that, I will welcome all of your questions in the comment section below. And until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.